Corner Bounds, welcome back to another episode. And welcome back to my shop. Just playing, it's just my parents' garage. So I need to take care of a bunch of small items today for this car. Uh, as you can see, it's getting pretty complete. And the reason why I'm not usually behind the camera when I'm doing like, you know, these type of build episodes is because when I'm up here, uh, most of my time is really dedicated to just like grinding away at the work itself. So I have to like pack in every single minute that I can. Where I'm from, we go crazy with them choppers. Selling dope, going diamond on my block. I, I, I got dollars on my blogger. Serve it to my blogger. Yeah, that's my blogger. So if you guys haven't tried Crocs, uh, definitely give it a shot because I mean it's amazing in the garage. They're super comfortable. Yeah, they're butt ugly, but it's a function thing, you know. So, but anyway, let's check out some uh, new parts that I got. My new C-pillar brakes bar that I had chromed, which is back. Some more Amazon stuff. New lights, I'll talk about this in a second. So I hit up the good folks at Bell Garage, and they hooked me up with this set of brand new OEM bumper lights. It's pretty cool that you can still buy these from Toyota. So it's all OEM. But anyway, let me open up one of these boxes and check them out. So yeah, thanks again to Battle Garage for getting me these. Check them out, battlegarage-rs.com. Actually, Grant, the proprietor of Battle Garage, should be helping me uh, do the startup tune on this car eventually, once I get to that point. So hopefully he'll come by and then, uh, you know, help me get this thing running. So one thing that's different about these JDM bumper lights versus a US car is that its connector is a four pin square connector versus the US one, which is a three pin circle one. So in order to make this light work on my US car, I'm just going to basically cut off this connector and then wire on this one. And you may notice that this one has three wires versus four on this one. So the JDM bumper lights has a really weird mechanism where this corner light is not really like a parking light or anything like that. So I'm not going to bother doing all that because in order to make it work exactly like OEM, you have to change all the circuitry that goes all the way into your uh, the stock itself and then add relays and all that, all that nonsense. So that's a little bit too involved. So I'm basically gonna take the quicker route and adapt this connector more easily. And I'll basically have to merge one of these two cables together so it turns on as like a parking light instead. What's up, Ezekiel? Look who it is. How's it going, dude? What's up, man? What brings you up here today? Uh, we're doing a proportioning valve install. That's right, we're doing some brake installs for this beams right here. So Ezekiel, correct me if I'm wrong, but the reason why we're even bothering to do in a proportioning valve is because of these big brakes. So when you install big brakes like these Willwoods, it completely throws off the bias towards the front, right? Yeah, so you'll have a lot of front bias. Exactly, so that's why we are gonna go through the effort of redoing some of these lines. We're gonna take off the stock proportioning valve and then put in the adjustable Willwood one. So that way we can really fine tune and balance the bias for the brakes. Cool, we have the, uh, the three-way adapter in there. So the fronts will get um, full pressure now instead of going through the factory proportioning valve. Oh, okay. So this three-way adapter, what does this connect exactly? Um, just the uh, the feed and then and then both of the front brakes. And then we're just basically tying in the back brake lines to the new proportioning valve. Yeah, yeah. Got it, okay. Cool. Got the part number too. <laughs> you can see it. Yeah, see the part number. People like seeing the part numbers. Cool. Throw that in the garbage, right? Uh, people still want them. <laughs> the next step is you have to cut this back line right here, right? And then mm -hmm. flare this in the car. Yeah, flare it in the car to uh, uh, ISO bubble flare. That's what the Willwood takes. Okay, yeah. what's the OEM type of flare? Uh, it's a double flare. And then we also have to remake this entire line completely, huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So this right here is a plug that goes to the US side body side. And I can't figure out which of these wires is what. All right, so I got that connector plugged into the harness itself and the battery's plugged in. We have the parking light on, so we're gonna find out which one of these cables is actually giving us 12 volts, and then that will be the parking light. And then obviously the other green one will be the turn signal, because we know for sure the white one is ground. There's a multimeter, and that's on the ground. So we think it's gonna be the solid green, let's see. There you have it, about 11.41 volts. So this one's gonna be the parking light, and then this one's gonna be the turn signal. Good to go. Whew. 
You. All right, Look nice. Zekiel, so tell us about these fittings. There's some differences, right? Cool. With the flares? Yeah, I had to learn this too. Um, <clears throat> so ISO bubble flare um, has a different fitting than a regular double flare. Uh -huh. So you can tell like this one's flat at the edge, whereas the regular double flare one is has like a recess in it. So that one has a recess? Mm -hmm. Like a little bit of a taper almost, huh? Mm -hmm. And then this one over here is the ISO one? Yeah, ISO metric bubble flare is flat at the end. Oh. All right, so now what happened? Oh, oh, here's this the, one? Okay. Yeah, here's the part number two for those uh, the bubble flare fittings. There you go. Which one is it? BR255. So over here, you just cut this uh, line down here, right? It's going to sit um, pretty far back um, away from like the residual exhaust heat. So I cut it back like a fair amount. Okay, cool. And now all we have to do is flare this end. We'll flare it for um, the ISO bubble flare and we'll put the correct fitting on there. Cool. Now let's check out the tool that you're going to use to flare with the ISO bubble flare. What is this thing? Yeah, you basically use um, hydraulic action and you can flare stuff in the car rather than like having to bring stuff out to the, the bench. So here's a look at the line all flared with a fitting installed. Now we're ready to put in this uh, proportioning valve itself, huh? More part numbers? Yeah, I think that's the part number right there. Okay, boom. Yeah, so I made this. It's um, TIG welded mild steel with, um, with some captured nuts on the back. Nice, and this puts it pretty close away from the heat, huh? It'll go like that. Looks good. Proportioning valve installed. Yeah, vacuum bleeder. Um, you just um, you can pump this by hand, and it creates a vacuum. And that's how you. That's how I usually bleed the brakes. So. Wow. Yeah, you don't need two people. You can just do this and then hang out. <laughs> so for the brake fluid, the product of choice is going to be Motul RBF six hundred. There you go. Want to do the honors? Cool, cool, cool. There are like three uh, brake fluids I really like. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one of them, RBF 600. Uh, I think the best one is uh, Castrol SRF. Yeah. The yeah, one. that one's that yeah. one's expensive though. Yeah. And then uh, AT Super Blue is pretty decent. Yeah, that's the that's like the most um, budget friendly one. Yeah. I used to run this, but it was like it was just too much money for me because I right. I bleed every um, event. So what do you use now, like AT? Uh, yeah, I just yeah. use AT. See how clean that reservoir is. Yeah, did you clean it? Oh yeah. <laughs> damn, this thing's shinier than a damn mirror. TIG welded. T3 plate. So I think I may have talked about this before, but I opted to not use the Miracle Crossbar in favor of just keeping this interior more simple and not having to cut anything up. So instead I contacted Tecton Toy Tuning and had them make me their hatch bar, which is just a simple horizontal bar that goes across this open area at the top. It should still accomplish the same reinforcement that I was looking for out of the Miracle Crossbar. So when I ordered this hatch bar, it had some special requirements. Usually they come powder coated, but I actually asked T3 to leave off the finish and just make it bare. And I also asked them to do TIG welding as well, which looks really nice. So the reason why I asked for this bar to be unfinished and just raw steel is because once they were done making the bar, I had them directly send it to a local plating company. And then of course I went through the extra step of having it chrome plated. Although I can't run the Miracle Crossbar, I still want to have the same bling bling type of finish. Uh, the Miracle Crossbar is actually polished stainless steel. This is just DOM steel. So that's why I went the chrome route and this thing looks really, really amazing. The chroming on this thing is super nice. Not sure if you guys can see it totally on the camera, but this thing is brilliant.